Welcome to this Gretel tutorial in which we will learn how to code categorical variables by using dummy variables. This video is not about how to interpret the coefficients of dummy variables, it is just about how to construct the dummy variables within the Gretel software. The data we will be using for this example is the same one discussed in the other videos where we have professor salaries data. Specifically, we have data on over 26,000 professors in the US of which we know their salary, which is a continuous variable, and we know two categorical variables. One is going to be their qualification, which is going to be either academic or professional, and their rank, where they can be an instructor or they can be a tenure track professor and become an assistant, associate, or full professor. Overall, this is how our data will look like. You see we have two columns with the two categorical variables and the continuous variable in salary. And our main objective, what we want to do with this data, is run a model like the following, where we have salary as dependent variable, and then a series of dummy indicators, which are going to be our dummy variables. But these dummy indicators do not correspond directly to the categorical variables. This is why we need to code them. And in the end, we're going to end up with a regression that looks like this. So just to clarify where we are heading to, this is how our final data set should look like. You see we have the same two initial columns with the qualification and rank categorical variables. We have salary, which needs no encoding. And then we want to create a dummy variable called professional to indicate if a particular professor is a professional and not an academic. Similarly, we want to turn on flags to indicate if a professor is an assistant, associate, or full professor. Note that we have excluded both the academic qualification and the instructor rank for reasons we will discuss in class. But this is where we're going to. Now let's go to Gretel to construct this data set. Our starting point is going to be the professor salary table in this CSV file. I'm going to open it in Excel just to show you how the data looks like. And note that we have two columns with strings, namely the names of the qualification and the rank, and a final column with a number which is the salary we see it has over 26,000 observations. And I just wanted to show you how this looked like so that we started on the same place. Now let's open this in Gretel. To open this file in Gretel, we will come to File, Open Data, User File. And as usual, Gretel will try to open a .gdt file, which is Gretel's default data file format. But in our case, our data set comes in a CSV file, so we click on CSV, and now we can click on the professor salary data. Take a note of this text right here. It's going to be important. It indicates that Gretzel found two string columns within the data set. In the first column called qualification, it had found two strings, academic and professional. And Gretzel automatically assigned numbers to these values. It assigned a 1 to an academic and a 2 for a professional. Similarly, for the rank column, it found four values, and it assigned numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, respectively to where it found an assistant professor, associate professor, instructor, or professor, which represents the full professor. We're going to keep this window handy as reference. Rettel also asked us if this is a time series or a panel data set, which it is not. So we click on No, and we can also close this window right here. Just for reference, let's observe our data. I'm going to select all the variables by using the Shift button on my keyboard and come to Data, Edit Values. Note that qualification and rank are no longer strings as the ones we saw in Excel. Rather, they are numbers and qualification can take a value of 1, yet if we go down where we had the professionals, we start seeing 2s. Meanwhile, rank only takes values 1, 2, 3, and 4. It is no longer a string. So this is how we start working in Gretel. The first thing we want to do is create one of our dummy variables. In this case, the dummy variables that indicate if professor is a professional or an academic. And remember we had created one dummy variable called professional, which was going to be a 1 if that faculty was a professional and a 0 otherwise, implying it was an academic. 
we could create just that single dummy variable or we could also create two, one for academic and one for professional. Creating one or two is very simple. We click on the discrete variable we want to work with and we come to the menu Add, Dummies for selected discrete variables. Gretel already knows how to create dummies. We have three options. One is to create a dummy variable for all and each of the possible options, in this case academic and professional, or since in our models we will always exclude one of the possible categories, Gretel automatically allows us to skip either the lowest or the highest value. However, in this case, we will encode all of them. So I leave encode selected and click OK. Note this new triangle to the left of qualification. It allows us to open up the options and show us what Gretel just created. And you note that the new variables start with the large caps D, which signal this is a dummy variable. And in particular, this one right here is a dummy variable for whenever qualification is a 1, which implies that this is a 1 whenever qualification was an academic. Similarly, the dummy variable turned on when qualification was a 2 indicates if the qualification is a professional. When we run our models, the computer and Gretel will not care how our variables are named. However, we will because we are the ones interpreting the results. So we want to change these names to more intuitive ones. To change the name of the first dummy variable, we will select it, right click, and edit its attributes. And note in this upper text field we have the name. In this case, the description of the variable already tells us that this is a dummy variable that is turned on whenever qualification is academic. So we might as well call this academic. I type it in and I press enter or click OK. And we just change the name of this dummy variable. We will do the same for the professional category. I right click and select edit attributes and change this to professional. And click OK. Now let's come and visualize the data to understand what we're doing. I will select all the variables again using the shift in the keyboard and come to data, edit values. And note that qualification was a one when it was an academic. That is how Gretel coded it. Correspondingly, our academic dummy variable is a one when qualification is a one. And meanwhile, professional is turned off. If we take a look at other rows, when qualification is a two, in this case indicating that this particular faculty is a professional, we have that academic is turned off, it is a zero, and professional is a one. Now let's do the same for the rank categorical variable. We select rank and ask Gretel to add dummy variables for this selected discrete variable. Once again, we could exclude either the lower or the highest value, but in this case, we prefer to encode all values. In general, encoding all values gives us greater flexibility when playing with our models. Once again, we open up rank and we see the four new dummy variables that correspond to each of the four possible values that Gretel automatically gave to rank when it imported the data. I'm going to start renaming them by clicking on the first one, right-clicking and editing its attributes. So in this particular case, the description remembers us that this is an assistant professor. So we can call this variable assistant. Let me teach you a Gretel trick. Rather than clicking OK, and then coming back to edit attributes, I can simply apply the changes to this variable and then go down to the next variable in the series. In this case, we're now looking at the dummy variable for associate, which we want to call associate. I will once again apply the changes and go to the next one. This one corresponds to instructor. 
and I'm going to on purpose not apply the changes and go to the next one just to see what happens. The final value for rank was a 4 whenever this was a full professor. So I'm going to call this full. And I apply the changes and click OK. Note that all our dummy variables have the names we gave them except the instructor one. If you remember, we did not apply the changes. So if this ever happens to you, chances are you skipped applying the changes, which I'm going to do now. I can apply the changes here or simply click OK. Once again, let's go look at the data to see if we are doing things the way we expect them. Note that we have rank. Whenever rank was a 1, this was an assistant professor, and in fact, only the assistant dummy variable is turned on. If we scroll down, we see, for example, that rank is a 4, indicating this is a full professor, and only the full professor dummy variable is turned on. Similarly, when rank is a 3, this indicated this was an instructor, and only the instructor dummy variable is turned on. So we have created the dummy variables we needed. All this work we have done to code the variables is one we would not like to repeat every time we open the dataset. However, this would not fit into the standard CSV file we had when we started. What we can do, however, is save this as a Gretel data file. Gretel data files can store all the information of where the dummy variables came from along with their descriptions. So I'm going to come here to File, Save Data, I'm going to call it ProfessorSalary.gdt, which is the default name Gretel has already given me. And I'm simply going to save this. If I happen to come back to this dataset, and I'm going to do this now by closing Gretel, not only is Gretel going to be the default program to open this dataset, but if I double click on this .gdt file, we already have all the dummy variables we had just created. Let's quickly run models with this. Salary is going to be our dependent variable. I'm going to run the model in the example where we had professional, assistant, associate, and full. Since we will be running several models, all of which have salary as dependent variable, we can also tell Gretel to set salary as our default dependent variable. This way, whenever we come back, salary is already going to be selected as our dependent variable. I click OK, and the output you see here is the exact same output produced in the theoretical video about interpreting dummy variables coefficients. But I'm going to close this to show you a couple of other nuances. Remember that when we run a model, we always exclude one of the dummy variables because we do not need, for example, two dummy variables to indicate two different categories. We only need one dummy variable to represent two categories. But what could happen if we included both professional and academic into our same model? Remember, these will represent the exact same thing. Whenever one is turned on, the other one is turned off. If we happen to run this model, two things are noticeable. First, the coefficients are all the same and make no sense whatsoever. Second, we get a warning from Getchell indicating that the data matrix is close to singularity. This means that there is no variance in the data. If we get this, this is because we have not excluded one of the dummy variables. In this case, we have both professional and academic. By the same token, if we ran a model in which we did not exclude at least one of the ranks and included all instructor, assistant, associate, and full professors, we have the exact same problem. All the coefficients are the same, and our data matrix is suffering from singularity. I'm going to close Gretel now to show you another nuance very common when working with new datasets. I'm going to open our CSV file in Excel once again. 
and I'm going to create a new column called qualification coded which is already going to have integer numbers to represent the qualification. In other words, I want to do by hand the same work that Gretel was going to do automatically when I loaded the CSV file into Gretel. Specifically, I want to code this new column and whenever the qualification is an academic, I want to have a value of 1 and whenever it is not an academic, that means it's a professional, it will have a value of 2. So this is the exact same coding that Gretel had done for us. I'm going to now apply it to all the observations and I will be wanting to delete the qualification column so before I lose my formulas I'm going to copy this and paste them as values. And I'm going to delete the original qualification column. Note that we have not lost any data. We still have a column that tells us if qualification was an academic or a professional. It's just that now we only see numbers, we don't see the original strings. And this is very common in many data sets, where for example, if there were a categorical variable indicating a city, rather than having the name of a city, we might have a city code or city ID, which is an integer number. The integer number does not represent a continuous variable, it just represents a category. In the context of the university, we could also have a department ID, which again is going to be an integer number, but the numbers are not going to tell us if one department is greater than the other. That doesn't make any sense. The numbers only represent the different categories in the data set but they are still considered categorical and hence discrete variables. I'm going to now save this as a new data table and I'm going to call it prof salary coded. And I save it. Some Excel warnings we can ignore. And I close the file. Now let's open this data set in Gretel. We once again come to File, Open Data, User File, I'm looking for my CSV file called Professor Salary Coded. Note that this time Gretel only found one string variable, namely rank. Qualification was already a number. So once again, let's come view the data and you see that qualification is 1 and 2. However, we know this is a discrete variable indicating if this is an academic or a professional. So we would want to, for example, create dummy variables for this particular discrete variable. However, if as before we come and try to create dummy variables, Gretel warns us that this is not a discrete variable. How do we correct this? We will by telling Gretel this is a discrete variable. For this, we select the variable, right click on it, edit its attributes, and tell Gretel to treat this variable as discrete. If we click OK, the values have not changed. However, we can now create dummy variables for it. As before, we encode all the variables. And if we open it, we see that the two new dummy variables were created. However, in this case, Gretel does not know if one represents academic or professional and similarly for the two but we know this since we know the origin of the data so we can now proceed to rename our dummy variables and use them as we did before and with this we conclude this video thank you very much